Today on Twin Cam, little Melvin here isn't running right at all, so we're going to see if we can maybe fix him. So after a few years and several thousand miles worth of completely trouble free, or at least relatively trouble free travelling, Melvin has decided he doesn't like going anywhere. He's been getting progressively lumpier over the last couple of weeks, but now when I start him, he will start okay, but then he starts misfiring, and as I start to lower the choke, he'll then completely cut out at anything below about 2000 RPM, which isn't exactly usable, and isn't exactly efficient, and also isn't exactly healthy. I can keep him running if I get rid of the choke completely, but hold the throttle open enough to keep the revs up to that kind of level to keep him going, but he still misfires like crazy. So realistically, if I want to take him anywhere, he needs lots and lots of choke and lots and lots of revs, and that's not good. So we definitely need to fix this now. So where are we going to start with figuring out what's gone wrong? In our quest to find where Melvin's issues actually lie, there are three places to look at. First of all is some kind of massive internal engine fault. Hoping it's not that because engine rebuilds or new engines can get quite expensive and a little bit labour intensive, but I don't think it is that this engine generally seems quite healthy. The second place, and the one that I think most people would start thinking about, because um, you know it, it, lowering the choke and it cuts out, um, would be the carburettor. Also hoping it's not that because I think carburettors are a bit of a dark art, um, but to be fair, since I've fitted that Manaflow exhaust, I should put a slightly different needle in this carburetor just to make it run a little bit richer, to let a little bit more fuel through um, to suit the needs of that exhaust system. But I don't know what needle I need to get, um, and frankly the car needs tuning properly anyway. When it does get a new needle, I don't know where it'd actually go because I don't know anyone with a rolling road. Um, or any, anyone anywhere close to being local to me that has a rolling road that knows how to tune carburetors, which is a shame, but... Um, but generally, I'm hoping it's not that because I think the car will run okay. So the third place is the ignition system. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that's the easiest of the three issues. And so that's where we're going to start. It's much easier to change some ignition system components than it is to tune a carburetor or to start dismantling carburetors. So we're going to start there. The first thing I've done is whip the spark plugs out to see if any individual cylinders are running way too rich or way too lean or whatever. And what I've discovered is that they're all a little bit rich. Um, so there are no outliers in the cylinders, so I don't think there are any individual faults with any of the individual plug leads, um, or the spark plugs themselves, or any internal engine faults with a particular cylinder. So the second place is the rest of the ignition system, which is over there. So I've got out my multimeter, and I have been looking at the resistances at a few of the components. So I've done all the HT leads, and noticed that a few of them are just slightly out of spec. Not too far out of spec, just ever so slightly out of spec. So that could be a start to our cause. Then I obviously check, well, the last HT lead, which is the king lead that goes from the distributor to the coil. That one is quite badly out of spec, so I think we're getting towards issues here and thinking some ignition components might need to be refreshed. Then I went and took my multimeter over to the coil and found that that was also slightly out of spec. Again, not enormously, but just a little bit out of the factory specs that Rover say in, in, the, in the repair manual. So I've got two different sets of components here to try and fix our issue. First of all is a genuine MG Rover ignition coil, and I've also got a set of leads. Let's hope it's nothing more sinister than that. Of these two issues, the lack of an idle and the misfiring, it's the latter that's the major issue. As I said, some people may think about going down the carburetor route first, but it's most probably the misfiring that's causing the car to cut out, and that's almost certainly emanating from a dodgy ignition system. You've already heard that I checked the plugs to make sure they're all working, and I cleaned up inside the distributor cap just to make sure the spark is as strong as it can be. The fact that the misfire doesn't seem to be coming from any particular cylinder points towards the main ignition components rather than anything taking place after the distributor. I'm also thinking that this issue isn't caused by one failed component, but the gradual deterioration of a number of them, eventually leading to the point where the car just won't idle. The coil I bought is a genuine MG Rover one, and a lot of people have asked the question, how easy is it to get parts for a 30 year old car built by a company that hasn't existed for 16 of those years? 
The answer is very. MG Rover was once a huge company, and metros were phenomenally popular, so 99% of mechanical parts are still readily available. The ignition coil is hidden down next to the battery tray and below this air intake duct, so that's the first thing that needs to come off. A lot of people that modify metros reroute the air intake to be either a hot one, located randomly somewhere in the engine bay, or up to the heater fan intake by cutting a big hole in the side. I don't see why anybody would do this as the original mounting location is a pretty decent cold air intake, hidden behind the near side headlamp. Having made a note of which connector goes on which side of the coil, we can disconnect it and then begin unbolting it. It's held to the bottom of the headlamp panel with two 13mm bolts and a bracket that allows it to be adjusted. What that does mean in this case is that I can't get a socket onto the frontmost bolt without clouting into the coil itself. So one socket and one spanner will have to suffice. An ignition coil is exactly what it says on the tin. Inside are two copper coils that, when energised, transform the 12 volts from the battery into the thousands of volts needed to fire the spark plugs. The low voltage connections are the two smaller ones I took off from the sides, and they link into the supply side of the car's ignition system. Traditionally, this is where your ignition points come in, as they regulate the power entering the coil, pulsing the 12 volt input to the rhythm needed by the engine. Melvin has electronic ignition, so this is more precisely controlled without the need for adjusting any contact points. Once the coil has done its thing, the electricity travels out through the central high voltage connection into the king lead and to the distributor, which distributes the power to the individual spark plug leads. With the new coil bolted to the car and connected up, we can move on to the HT leads. The leads I've bought are Bosch ones. I'm trying for a bit of the perceived German reliability to replace the old Prince of Darkness Lucas leads that aren't even the correct length. I'm doing these one at a time so I don't lose which spark plug belongs to each of the connections on the distributor. They're all different lengths to suit their individual runs and so need to be sorted before they can replace the old ones. I'm starting with the lead for cylinder number 4 and working my way through to number 1. 99% of the time, cylinder number 1 is on the end of the engine with the pulleys, with number 4 at the gearbox end. For this installation, therefore, you can just read the cylinders in front of you as 1, 2, 3, 4. But that's not always the case. The Classic Mini, for example, reads 4, 3, 2, 1. Yes, that is me very carefully adjusting the lengths of each lead in their clips to make them look right. Don't judge. The final lead is, of course, the King lead with a fantastically framed shot of my left shoulder. Then we can refit the intake pipe and finally clip the new King lead to the cable tie that Rover very kindly added to neaten it all up. One final adjustment to the lengths because I'm a massive pedant and we should be done. Now that's all buttoned up, let's hope my diagnosis was correct and we'll go for an engine start. It worked! Ha! So there you go then, there is at least some strength in my diagnosis skills. That's the first time I've ever done anything like that, that feels very nice. Uh, anyway, so we now have a car that idles. Uh, the engine of course is cold um, and so we'll need choke, but revving smoothly, no more misfiring. Um, car is now idling at least at the you know, 1300 odd RPM fast idle. Um, rather than the like two, two and a half thousand revs he needed previously to keep running. 
But yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. So, I think there's nothing left to say other than thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please do click like and subscribe to TwinCam as well. I'm forever indebted to my wonderful Patreon supporters, so if you'd like to support me that way, then please do follow the link in the description. And I'll have more videos coming along soon.